Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and today is Monday, October 14th and it is the start of Spookathon. I am so excited to be participating in this readathon that is hosted by Books and Alala. I will link her channel down below. I already did a TBR video where I talked about the five or six books that I'm planning on reading this week, so I will also link that if you guys want to check it out prior to watching this. It's 11 a.m. and I did a little bit of reading this morning. I was folding some of Avery's laundry, so I pulled up the audiobook for The Test by Sylvan Nouvelle, and I'm already halfway through it because it is only a two-hour audiobook because I think the book itself is only a little over 100 pages. And usually I can listen to audiobooks on two times the speed but with this one due to the narrator I'm having to listen to it on 1.25 speed. It's because the main character in the story has a really strong accent which is great and authentic for who the character is because the main character is from Iran and so I really appreciate it that the representation of the narrator is really accurate but it's a little bit harder for my ear and so I'm listening to it on 1.25 speed which is a little more like regular speed and so it's taking me a little bit longer to get through the audiobook. I know if I was reading it physically I'd probably already be done within that hour but that's okay I am taking some time and just enjoying it and I've heard the test is compared to the TV show Black Mirror which is one of my absolute favorite shows and I would definitely agree it is about a citizenship test and this man who is taking it and what happens and some crazy things go on in the testing room and we go over the questions and how ridiculous they are because they're basically just asking facts about the UK and how does that really determine whether or not someone would be a good citizen and so far I'm really enjoying it I don't want to say too much else about the premise just because it is such a short novella so I'm really excited to read this just because I've heard great things about it. Even Kayla at Books and Lala really liked it. And so I'm going to try and finish that. I will come and update you guys once I do. Okay, so it is several hours later. It is after four o'clock. And earlier this afternoon, I did finish the test by Sylvan Nouvelle. And I finished it on audio. It was a pretty quick read. And I would definitely agree with a lot of the people that say that this book is a lot like Black Mirror because it did have that science fiction element to it. And it did have this foreboding and suspenseful element. And there was a twist in here that was before the halfway mark that was pretty good and I didn't see it coming. But the remainder of the book didn't seem very shocking to me. I could kind of see the trajectory of where it was going and what the overarching message was. And I did really enjoy it, but I didn't feel super shocked after that first twist. At the end, I resonated with the overall message and I saw what the author was trying to point out to us. And I did find it really interesting and intriguing. And I think it would make a really good Black Mirror episode because it is right up their alley. But I ended up only giving it three and a half stars just because I'm not a huge fan of shorter length stories. I prefer full length novels. And there was just some elements of it that I didn't love. So three and a half stars, I still liked it, but it definitely was not a new favorite. So I'm really excited. I already have one book down for the Spookathon. I think next I'm going to pick up Dead Girls by Abigail Tartelin and I'm picking this one up next because it is published tomorrow and I have an arc of it so I'd really like to get it finished by tomorrow when it is published. I'm really looking forward to reading it. I'm gonna get some reading in and then I will come and update you guys later. Okay so it is after 10 30 and I have not done any more reading. I still plan on reading a little bit before bed and starting Dead Girls by Abigail Tartelin. My husband and I ended up watching the new movie on Netflix called El Camino which is the follow-up to the Breaking Bad series which him and I absolutely loved. I think we've watched it two times through so when we saw it was on Netflix we knew we had to watch it and let me just say guys that movie was so good and it made me really wish there was a series again but I digress that one was so good. I also made my buffalo chicken chili which I have made several times on my vlogs before and it is really really good. I will leave the recipe down below just because I think all of you should check it out but tomorrow is my birthday so today we just kind of celebrated my husband had the day off due to Columbus Day so we took the day just to enjoy ourselves and kind of celebrate my birthday early tomorrow we might go out to dinner I might go get a free birthday coffee at Dutch Bros but I am exhausted so I'm gonna read a little bit and then pass out okay so it's day number two of Spookathon it is afternoon I didn't get a chance to film this morning but I've been having a pretty good birthday so far I made cold brew for the first time yesterday and so I tried it this morning and it was absolutely amazing. So I made another batch to last us the rest of the week and I'm really excited because I think that'll be a super money saver. And then last night I told you guys I was gonna do some reading before bed, but right after my husband and I got in bed to go to sleep, we had an earthquake hit and it was really strong and I haven't had one here in a really long time. I live in California and I have my whole life 
and I used to deal with a lot more earthquakes when I was a kid but I haven't felt a ton since being an adult and last night it was a 4.5 on the Richter scale which is pretty high and it shook my whole bedroom and for some reason Avery didn't wake up which was crazy but it did kind of freak me out so I ended up not reading and just going to bed but this morning I started Dead Girls by Abigail Tartelin and so far I'm a little over halfway through it and I'm not loving it unfortunately. I didn't know what it was about but it's about a young girl who is 11 years old and she has this friend group and her and her best friend like to go in the woods and play and one day her and her best friend are in the woods and her best friend meets this older guy they call the walker and he's just this random strange man in the woods and our narrator ends up going home but she doesn't know where her best friend goes and she ends up going missing and the police are trying to find where this girl went and who could have taken her and who is this walker and the girl ends up being found dead the best friend actually finds her and it could be linked to several missing cases of other girls who went missing the last couple of years and possibly like a serial killer what's weird to me is our main narrator she's 11 years old and she has a ton of this inner monologue that is super boring and detailed and I feel like for her age she's pretty immature and she is having these visions of ghosts so she's thinking she's seeing both her best friend as well as the other dead girls from the area and it kind of is just throwing me for a loop and I am not enjoying this one. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm reviewing an ARC I probably would DNF this because I am not liking it so at this moment I don't think I would recommend it. I'm not a huge fan of books that are through the eyes of the child's perspective especially in regard to crime thrillers. I don't mind it if it's mixed in with some adult perspectives but seriously it's all through the perspective of this 11 year old and I am not loving it so I'll come back and update you guys once I finish it. Okay so it's a few hours later and I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is is that I'm getting free coffee because at Dutch Bros you get free coffee on your birthday so heck yeah I am taking advantage of that. The bad news is is Dead Girls by Abigail Tartelin was complete trash. I hate saying that because it doesn't have a lot of reviews and I don't like talking negatively about books but I really didn't like it. The writing style was just absolutely terrible and I think the story had really good potential but I didn't think it was executed very well whatsoever. There was this paranormal aspect our main character she's talking to the ghosts of dead girls and that is kind of interesting but at the same time I just didn't think it was executed very well and I did like who the killers ended up being of her best friend I thought that was really unique and very good but once we kind of got an inkling of who that was it was super easy to guess the trajectory of the story and overall I just didn't love it I think I might give it about one and a half or two stars which is such a bummer. I think it was just so poorly written and that's why I'm rating it so low. So unfortunately that one was a miss and I read a kind of terrible book on my birthday, but I'm gonna pick up another book before I go to bed tonight. I will show you guys this pie that I made and I'm really excited for it, so I'm hoping it's delicious. Okay, so I told you guys I would show you this pie that I made for my birthday and it's called a lemon icebox pie and it only has three ingredients. I will leave the link to the Pinterest recipe down below. It was super easy. I'm not much of a baker and it's a no-bake pie just as a refrigeration type of pie. And my husband was sweet enough to get me some really beautiful sunflowers for my birthday. Sunflowers are my favorite flower. They are such a happy flower and they always put a smile on my face. So I'm really happy about that. And I just started making my own cold brew. I have a mason jar as well as a strainer on the inside basically to steep the coffee. And we had some today and it was really delicious so we were just making more for the rest of the week. And it's a really cheap and affordable way to make coffee at home if you're not always a fan of hot coffee. So yeah, I think I'm going to dive into this pie, go play with Avery. As you can tell in the background, she is giggling up a storm. Enjoy the rest of my birthday and I will check in later. Okay, so it's about 10.30 and I'm about to head to bed. My husband and my daughter are already both asleep and I'm feeling pretty tired so I don't think I'm going to do any more reading tonight. But after my daughter went to bed at 9 o'clock, I started a new book and so far I'm really enjoying it. And that is All the Beautiful Lies by Peter Swanson and this obviously counts for the challenge of reading a book with red on the cover because it is covered in the color red. And Peter Swanson's books have been really hit or miss for me. Some of his older titles I didn't really like but I really loved his 2019 release and this one I think is a 2018 release so it is one of his newer books. And so far I'm a little under 100 pages in and it's less than 300 pages so I know I only have a couple hundred pages left. And it is about this young man named Harry and I think he just graduated college and his dad has just mysteriously died while on a walk by the cliff. 
and he's left behind a widow which is Harry's stepmother named Alice and Alice is a lot younger than his dad. She's actually not that much older than Harry and Harry moves into Alice and his dad's house and helps her with his dad's shop. He owned a bookstore and so now Harry is back in helping with that but he is also there to help Alice just grieve and deal with the death of Harry's dad. And we know that he has some strange attraction toward Alice and I think there's going to be some type of forbidden romance there. And he encounters this really mysterious young woman who is fresh to the town and I assume that maybe there will be a romance there too. I'm not really sure. We're also seeing Alice who is the widowed wife. We're seeing her back when she was a teenager, kind of her upbringing with her mother and her stepfather and some really interesting things that go on in her mother's alcoholism. And it is really interesting. It is definitely more of a character developing story. It is not super plot driven. So it's definitely about the characters. And so far I'm really liking it. I don't know where the crazy stuff is gonna happen or if it is going to be a thrilling book or if it's just kind of a light mysterious read and I'm positive I'm going to finish it tomorrow. It's a really quick read. But yeah, I'm not going to read any more tonight. I'm just going to go to bed and I will check in tomorrow. Good morning, guys. It's day number three of Spookathon. It's a little bit before noon and I just finished my third book for Spookathon and that is All the Beautiful Lies by Peter Swanson. Last night I checked in when I was about 100 pages into this book and it's a little under 300 pages, I think like 285. So this morning it took me like no time just to read the remainder of it and I really was intrigued by this story. It's definitely a character driven story versus a plot driven story. From what I can remember I think it's part one and part two and we totally get to see through the perspective of four different characters and I think that all of the characters are pretty effed up people. They are pretty sinister. The only person that I think is a truly good person is our main character Harry but everyone else is pretty messed up and there are a lot of taboo relationships in this book. I was a little bit wrong about a couple things that I assumed. I really liked how devious all these characters were and I really enjoyed seeing the past perspective of Alice who is Harry's stepmother and her upbringing and her experience with her stepfather Jake and the biggest twist I didn't actually see coming so I really enjoyed that. I wouldn't say this is a heart pumping thriller like I said it's definitely focusing on the characters more than the plot but I still really liked it so I think I'm going to give it four stars. My husband is currently home from lunch but then after he goes back to work I'll probably play with Avery for about an hour or so before her nap and then once she goes down I do need to edit some footage of this vlog just so I can get it up tomorrow but after that I'm going to start my next book and I think I'm going to read one of my Nat Galley arcs. So I think I'm going to pick up The Other Wife by Claire McGowan. Like I said in my TBR I haven't read this author before and I have another one of her books on my Kindle so I'm kind of curious to read one of her novels and see if I like her writing style. I also think this one comes out at the end of this month possibly so I want to get it done as soon as possible. And this is a domestic thriller which you guys know I love so I'm really excited to get to it. I don't really know a lot of the plot but once I get some reading in I will come back and update you guys. Okay so it is about about five o'clock and I am getting dinner together. Avery is just playing behind you in the living room and my husband is out for a run on the track on base. And dinner will have to cook for about an hour so that's why I'm kind of getting it together a little bit earlier. We're having chicken apple sausage and one of my favorite roasted veggie combos which is Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, bacon, and maple syrup in black pepper. It is absolutely delicious. I will show you guys what it looks like before I put it in the oven. It doesn't look super appetizing before I stick it in the oven because it is covered in raw bacon but basically it is one and a half sweet potatoes peeled and cubed and I used the yellow sweet potatoes. It is one bag of Brussels sprouts that I quartered because the Brussels sprouts were huge and then in a mixing bowl I tossed the vegetables in olive oil spread them out on a tin foil lined pan and then top it with black pepper bacon and maple syrup and the maple syrup we use is like a pure maple syrup and this was full when I opened it today so that's about how much I used. This is a lot of veggies so I had to use quite a bit of maple syrup just to make it sweet enough. And then we are going to be browning up some chicken apple sausage in butter. This is obviously before I cooked it and I just serve it on the side. It's delicious. I don't like to roast these in the oven. I think they taste way better sauteed. And if you guys are wondering what I serve Avery for dinner, I did a half a sweet potato cubed and peeled and I steamed it and I mixed it with some butter, cinnamon, and milk. So I think she's really going to like that and if she's still hungry I will probably give her some turkey. She is obsessed with turkey so I'll probably give her that too. So that's basically going to be her dinner since she cannot eat exactly what we eat. So I kind of make a 
modification of whatever we make for dinner. So once it comes out of the oven, like I said, it'll cook for about an hour. I will show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I just took the food out of the oven and you want your bacon to be fully cooked how it is here. So it cooked for about 45, 48 minutes. I think I put it in right at five. So it was in, I don't know, for about 45 minutes. And then I cooked up the chicken apple sausage and this is so delicious and if you like kind of like that maple bacon flavor I think you would love this and it is one of our favorite meals especially in the fall since Brussels sprouts is such a fall vegetable in my opinion so yeah we're hungry we're gonna dig in and I will update you guys later on what I pick up next okay so it's a little after 9 p.m. and I did start my next read I'm 25% the way through with The Other Wife by Claire McGowan. And in this one, we're following three different women. There is Nora, Susie, and Elle. And Nora has just moved to this really remote cottage in this little town that is super pulled away from London. And she meets her new neighbor who is named Susie. And Susie is six months pregnant. And you know that she's kind of struggling with her controlling husband. Whereas Nora has just moved there because her husband has died and she is a widow and she never was able to have children and so it's a little uncomfortable seeing Susie who is now pregnant and Nora is not. But you know there are some secrets. We know that Nora is hiding things and she kind of already knows who Susie is. So you're wondering how she knows Susie and what her secrets are. And then the third woman Elle seems to really have nothing to do with these other two women but of course I'm sure everything will kind of relate. And Elle is married to a really wealthy surgeon. I think he's a gynecologist and he's always out at odd times of night and he's never at home on time. And he kind of convinces Elle that she is losing it because she'll question him like, where are you? Are you cheating on me? And he alludes to a previous breakdown and kind of almost threatens her. And so we're seeing through the perspective of these three different women, you're seeing the relationship with Nora and Susie and inside their minds and inside their kind of messed up worlds. And then Elle, who is completely separate, but kind of going through some similar things as the other women too. So far, I'm really liking it. I want to see where this story goes. It is definitely not super fast paced at the moment, but I am intrigued. Like I said, I'm only a quarter of the way through and I think it's like 320 pages. So it's not a super long book. I don't know if I'll read any more tonight. I do have to get this footage edited and I do have to upload my part one reading vlog. So I'm going to end the vlog here just so I have time to do that. I don't want to go to bed too late. I will see you guys back for part two.